this is the image I gave it and just said, provide a deep backstory for this individual. Most guarded secret is her affair with a young artist who visited the mansion decades ago. Like, <laughs> For today's video, we're going to be looking at an upcoming vision model from NVIDIA called NVIDIA Nemotron Nano 2 VL. Now this is a 12 billion parameter vision model, and obviously vision models, especially from larger corporations like NVIDIA, are very poised towards agentic use cases such as parsing PDFs of invoices and doing other kind of structured bean counter data things that would be useful for businesses to have something reliable. So for today's video, we're going to essentially get a hands-on test and first look of this new model, and we'll perhaps have some fun along the way. Now, while this model is going to be on Hugging Face, it currently is not. So in lieu of the traditional read-through of the model card, I have slapped an About section here into my vibe-coded web UI, and we'll basically just pretend this is the Hugging Face model card. So we have Nemotron Nano 2 VL, which of course is a 12 billion parameter vision language model. Now, for more realistic stuff, it does have a cool transformer architecture of hybrid Mamba. I know that it's not a technical or scientific way to put that, but this does have a rather unique architecture that is something I've been seeing more of lately with IBM's Granite release. A lot of those models in the Granite 4 family have this architecture as well. And in specific for something like this, which is a multimodal model, it definitely helps because it really excels at allowing this to run more efficiently, especially in tasks like watching videos or things like that, where as the context grows, this architecture allows it to not take up massive gigantic amounts of VRAMs that a traditional architecture may in fact do. Beyond that, there was a paper here for some kind of um, testing of this architecture by NVIDIA, and I do believe they said that it was three times faster at inference while maintaining relative performance to models with more traditional architecture. So it is obviously kind of cool. There is a training data set that is going to be released with this as well. It's all open. I have to say, I was actually kind of okay with the fact that the license seems fairly permissive here. So from what I gathered, don't quote me on this, it seems like you can just kind of use this and redeploy it and you don't have to credit them, which I will say is kind of, I'm cool with that. So we have our precisions available and it will have VLLM support. So FP8 and NV FP4. Beyond that, there are some key capabilities right here, which we don't really need to go through because we'll demonstrate them in the video. And then we have some technical highlights and things like that, um, which I'll just leave on screen so anyone can pause and read this section if they so desire. And beyond that, use case examples, blah, 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 and etc. So. Basically, that is just kind of a quick first look and partial technical look at this model. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and hop into a demo and hopefully have some fun. I suppose first and foremost, I should start off by highlighting some more realistic use cases of this model. One that I find to be kind of interesting is that it does have the capability to watch videos. I have a video for this. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's a video from my website, not um, what you may have thought I was referring to. All right. Uh, let's copy this. So this is obviously just an advertisement for a Jetson powered social robot. But beyond that, we can go ahead right here and paste the video URL to the video from my website right here. And I'm basically just going to say describe what happens in this video. And we'll go ahead and submit that. Now this is obviously something that will be on Hugging Face so you can just download and run it locally. But for this current test, I am just using it through the API so I can rack up those free credits. Oh. <laughs> All right. In the video, a man is seen in a room filled with various electronic devices and equipment. He's wearing a striped shirt and is seated at a desk with a laptop. Okay, and I won't really read through this verbosely, but he appears to be demonstrating or explaining something about the robot that is correct. He's engaged and possibly excited about the technology he's showcasing. All right, well, that is absolutely correct. Now, something that's probably more pertinent to a business use case where you have some sort of agentic pipeline where this specific thing would act as an agent to look at PDFs and then go ahead and extract specific information from them, this is something it can do that's quite decent. So basically, we're going to go ahead here into the picture section where we have a kind of a hard to read PDF, which is basically just kind of a wiring diagram for um, a wiring harness deletion for a kit car. So basically it tells you what you can actually remove from the wiring harness of the original car. So this is hard to see and, you know, it's just extremely dense with lots of tables and kind of close together information. So so we're just asking it first and foremost to sum up the information in the file. Obviously, the file doesn't really have a lot of pertinent information about what it actually is. It's almost just kind of like a wiring diagram. Oh, okay. Damn. 
All right, that's not bad. So it even picked out who created it. It knows what it is. Various connectors, their function is a note for each, organized into sections with each section containing multiple rows of data. It gives us its date. All right, so let's kind of do a more intricate test. And I'm just going to copy one of these things and ask it, what do I do with that specific component? And again, this sort of test is something that would definitely become more, this is more business focused or I suppose people doing things where they need to extract very specific information from PDFs like this are likely going to be businesses, but okay. And it tells us got a junction. So we can see right there, that is exactly what it says. All right, well, let's just try another one right here. We'll try this as the last thing. And again, obviously, like, you know, I like to have fun in my testing, but I guess the occasional um, hardcore, like proper academic test is acceptable to do. Okay. So let's try this. I don't know if I got cut off before. What I was saying is this is fast for two reasons. One, because I'm using it through API, but two, because of that hybrid Mamba transformer architecture. So, okay, you should delete it if not using seatbelt chime. So again, it didn't give me the specific answer right here. Body integrated module to seatbelt switch. Oh, and it says delete if not using seatbelt chime. Okay, so that's another thing that probably would have appeared multiple times here. All right, that's actually not bad because this is so much information density right here. And again, if you had something like this you were using in a pipeline, you would need to specifically prompt it in a better manner than I'm doing right here. All right, so something else this is capable of doing is inputting multiple images at the same time. So we're just going to give it a few completely random images. So here's an image from my channel. Oh, I have to upload them. Uh, I have to drag them in at the same time or else. Okay, so there's an image from my channel, a random cityscape, which is Detroit, a picture of me with my robot, a picture of me at a dining room table in a driveway with a motorcycle opposite me, and then a graphic from, I think, some Quen model. So we'll go ahead and drag them in. So I'm just making it seem like I'm testing it, and there's one specific answer for this, which is obviously just a bunch of random images that are not related at all. Now, I do want to see... This is, again, this is all vibe coded, but for multiple images, okay, so I can turn on reasoning mode, which is good because seeing the thought process can sometimes be entertaining when you're trying to kind of trick or fool around with the model. So let's see what goes on right here. Oh, crap. All right. Oh, okay, because we got a reasoning process. All right, I'm going to read through this, and then if anything's funny, I'll point it out. First, image one is a screenshot of the Bijambo on YouTube channel with 30.2 thousand subs. That's an old image. I got 33 now. Cityscape with a tall building. Okay, generic city view. We can, we'll go ahead and ask it where that is too. That's another thing I will do. Person in a tech setup looking at a screen. That's me with my robot. Sitting at a wooden table with a green motorcycle nearby. All right, and then a technical diagram for Quen 3 vl All right. The relationship is that they collectively represent content related to the Bijambo and YouTube channel. Oh, images three and four likely depict the host in different settings. All right, what does it say for the cityscape? Might be part of a different video, but is not directly tied to the tech theme. Unifying thread is in the channel's focus on AI and software testing. Okay, interesting. So it even was like, bro, the city image has no relation here. And again, there was no relation between these, so that was acceptable. All right, two things I want to do. First, I want to ask it if it can identify where this city is. And we'll see what happens. This is a tough one, but I've seen it correctly done. Okay, proper. Photo is the Detroit skyline. Very good. Presence of the river in the foreground is consistent, which separates the city from Windsor. Taken from a vantage point across the river, likely from the Canadian side or from the boat on a river itself. Okay, very good. That's a test that I've done once before, and this got it correct. So, that is good to see. Now, beyond that, we're going to do something which I've very much kind of just come to regret at this point, which is the self-roast test. I think it has been dubbed by some. Provide a scathing review of this channel. This will be good. And I have thinking disabled, or reasoning. Ah. Oh, God. Shambon's channel is a chaotic mix of tech reviews and coding tutorials with a heavy focus on AI and open source models. The content is often repetitive with multiple videos on the same topic, such as the first test series. Well, yeah, no because there's a lot of things to test for the first time, okay? With some videos featuring a cluttered background and others with a more professional setup, 
All right. The host's enthusiasm is palpable, but it's often overshadowed by the lack of depth in the content. All right. Well, the channel seems to cater to a niche audience, but the overwhelming number of videos on similar topics can be overwhelming. Okay, he said overwhelming like a bunch there, so that's overwhelming in and of itself. Overall, while the channel has potential, it needs to focus on the quality over quantity and provide more in-depth analysis to truly stand out in the tech review space. Yeah, I think the sub count would disagree with that, Nemo. We're going to do the inverse of this test, where we provide a scathing positive critique of this channel's image. His passion for his work, infectious enthusiasm. Very good. Must watch for anyone. In, very good. This looks like a quote from like a book cover in the back where they have like quotes from the people who read it. That's very good. <laughs> I want to try something. Again, this is out of scope testing, but this is of course my hand-drawn wireframe for Johnny's Bitcoin Duplicator, the website. So I'm just going to ask it to actually generate the code to build the website shown in this image. All right, so we did actually get something here. It had its reasoning process, obviously, but then it did go ahead and actually give us some syntax that we can now go ahead and run. So this will be, I'm very interested in seeing this end result. <laughs> All right, let's check this. Hook, make it good. All right, you know, it did get some of the triple sevens here. I may have messed up a bit of the syntax when I copy pasted it over, but we have a hover effect on the button here. We do have a few <laughs> kind of, Things. Okay, the button is clickable, but it doesn't do anything. Hook me. I love how it just very much verbosely copied what I said there. So the meaning of what it was supposed to do was somewhat lost, but I find that to be actually like fairly common. In some of the models I've tested this with. So, okay. And then we have a simple footer. We have the name of the website, users, projects, partners. The service stats are incredibly insightful. We even have fake customer testimonials here. I'm going to do another PDF test. This time, this is just the NVIDIA um, article on the actual kind of architecture of these models or similar ones. So obviously, this is a large PDF. And I find, I don't know if this is a limitation of this little vibe code interface or just kind of a model thing, but it limits it to the first 10 pages. So that's why in the settings here, there is actually a section for using a specific page range for PDFs. But if we don't specifically... Um, denote that it will just concatenate it to the first 10. So I will just say, please give me a technical overview of what is listed in this article. All right. And we have a relatively short response here, but it does properly at least assess some of what that article is talking about. Let me say, let me change that. Please give me a verbose. And I'm going to bump the response length up. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> So we did get a bit of a longer response here, just kind of telling us a little bit more information about what's contained in that. But honestly, I think the wiring diagram PDF test was probably a better way to showcase at least some interaction with PDF here. This is just kind of another thing to test it with. With that, I feel like now is a reasonable time to go ahead and just try some more uh, silly things with this. Let's just do some creative writing testing with this, I guess. So here's obviously a rather historic photograph to those of us in the know. So we're going to drag this in and then just ask it something creative. And I'll enable reasoning mode there so the temperature gets bumped up a little. And also maybe we'll be able to see some of its thought process as well. There's a poster with the wave of the future. All right, that's cool to see because that's kind of way in the background. I looked over there because it's like I can see it in the wall. That's pretty good. All right. Title should be catchy. Maybe something like The Architect of Tomorrow. I'm going to say, this thing is good at creative writing. It's probably not at all designed to do any of... I mean, this thing's designed to be like a like a very business-focused, like, yes, I will properly pull out this specific information from a PDF file. But this actually going ahead and being creative is not something I really expected. It's creative writing is rather impressive to me and maybe that is better with reasoning enabled because then the temperature gets bumped up which we can see higher is more creative so all right this is an ai generated portrait of an individual so we'll just go ahead and put this in and say provide a deep backstory for this individual and we'll put reasoning mode on there as well i have to say i want to see some of these like little nemotron models and almost like character creation scenarios uh, if they had like a very micro one of Whatever this is based on, it could be perhaps kind of interesting. Oh, wow. Inner, I already, the first thing I see, inner conflict. Ellie Stern expression. 
blames herself for Ambrose's early death. He succumbed to tuberculosis at four. It's not funny. I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at the ridiculousness of what this thing is doing. <laughs> I have to, yeah. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's, you know, her appearance, plump with short blonde hair, could hint at a certain lifestyle. Perhaps she's a socialite. Again, because back then, fat people were, like, more high class, so. um, But, wow. This thing really, like, she was probably educated at home with private tutors, emphasizing etiquette and arts, personal struggles. Trapped by societal... Good God, what the heck was this thing trained on? Answer, we have a name. Eleanor Ellie Whitmore. Late Victorian, early Edwardian style. Setting a decaying Gothic revival mansion in the English countryside. Sorry, NVIDIA, but this model, I think, may be best at, like, doing this sort of stuff. Um, unintended <laughs> use case. Where's this... Like, let me just... I'm going to Google this to see if... This is some, like, if it's just pulling from some video game or book lore, I'm going to be pissed off. All right, I looked up the name to see if it was just pulling it from some book or something, but the only item I saw for that was obviously, like, a vibe-coded slop book. So this actually was somewhat unique. I'm sorry, I'm having too much fun with this, but like, again, I just want to kind of reiterate, this is the image I gave it and just said, provide a deep backstory for this individual. Most guarded secret is her affair with a young artist who visited the mansion decades ago. Like, <laughs> wow. All right, so for the final thing we're going to do here, I will just do something real and within the bounds of what this is probably going to be mostly used for. So I have downloaded some form of sample invoice right here. And perhaps I will just try almost like a plain text extraction prompt or something of the sort. Okay, so it's saying for, it's very concise in its answers when reasoning is disabled, I find. So $453. Oh, good. Okay, I was worried it was going to make me do math. All right, well, that is obviously correct because that is specifically what it says here. I don't know if it really understood what I meant by skim a bit off the top, but I was partially expecting a refusal. And again, this is just a random <laughs> sample invoice that was downloaded from the internet. So overall, I think that's probably going to conclude our testing of the newly released or newly soon to be released NVIDIA Nemotron Nano VL, Nano 2 VL the 12 billion parameter reasoning model that is multimodal. I will say this model is perhaps a lot more enjoyable to play with than maybe was intended when creating it, but it does perform well in terms of some of the more general tasks that it will likely be used for, like parsing things from PDFs and things like that. I'm going to say I was absolutely blown away by its creative writing capability. I'm not entirely sure if that was just regurgitating things from like popular um, culture lore that I am not familiar with, but some of the stuff it came up with with reasoning enabled was really quite hilarious and entertaining. It did do a good job on some of my image um, analysis tasks like the scathing critique and scathing positive critique, as well as identifying the location of that Detroit skyline image. So overall, this is a cool new model that is open source and to be released that can be run locally. So it's always good to have more multimodal vision language models for specific tasks. I guess that is going to conclude today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.